All right, everybody. Uh, it's a little early. We still got a few minutes, but if you can hear my voice and you see engineering your future, raise your hand, please. All right, excellent. And for those, uh, we've got a lot of returning folks, but that little hand icon over by your uh, go to webinar software will raise a hand and lower it. We're going to go through that again once everybody else gets here. Very excited about getting started. I've talked to your teacher, Mr. Maurer, and uh, we've got some really exciting things going on. Just, and I, again, it's getting close to eight, but just so you know, uh, we'll meet normally on this night and all the webinars will be recorded. And within two hours of the webinar, we will put up a YouTube video. This will be recorded. It'll be put up on YouTube. So that way you can go back and watch these. When we get into something, for example, when we start doing some Python programming, as we learn, we uh, do some of these things, uh, we will also put up PDF so you can follow along even before it. And today I was ordering Raspberry Pis for the classes and getting the equipment so you'll be able to get those in lab next time you have lab, which is approximately uh, a little less than two weeks. All right, we have nine folks here. Um, expecting a couple more, but we're gonna get started. We, we want to um, not punish people for being on time. We want to encourage it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. I do have my, normally don't have my phone on like this. I have it on now because uh, the first time of a webinar, sometimes we get a little bit of problems. So I've got it here. So if you tear a text message, it might be because of that. But we are, our goal tonight is to introduce engineering and to uh, make sure we're signed up for everything. So let's just go through this. Do you like to take things apart? Would you find building a game more fun than playing the game? Curious about how to solder, use epoxy, repair a tent with needle and thread? Enjoy math or science? Again, don't have to be a math brilliant. You don't have to be a math genius for this. Do you like to read science fiction or fantasy? If any of those things appeal to you, would you raise your hand? Again, the little hand icon is how you bring it up. And if you can't raise a qu your hand, just put it in the chat message or send it as a question. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad to see most everybody enjoys some of all doing some of all those things. Put your hands down. Well, welcome. You're among friends. And that's really what I want you to know. That's one of the nicest things about this is whether we're online or you're with Mr. Maurer, you are among friends that want to do engineering and want to take science and apply it to solve problems. This is me up here in the top right corner, working with a couple of students who are now probably college graduates. These people down here, this is me, a much younger version of me. Uh, he is a minister. He is an engineer. She is an environmental scientist. He is an eye doctor. Give you an idea. Um, and so these are some different folks who I've worked with. So what are we going to be doing? Well, a lot like last year. We're going to learn by doing. You're going to be working with your head and hands. We want you to be technology creators, not just consumers. By that, I mean not just playing an iPad. If, we make a, if you're playing a computer game, we want you to learn how to make a computer game. All right? So let's talk about how this class is set up. Class meetings, one hour labs, twice a week online. Homework, nope. Tests, 
No. Digital portfolio, yes. We're going to really try to stress it this year. It's a good habit. It's a good way we're evaluating and unlearn. It's a good way to have records so later in life you can show an employee, show a college. Many of you will be going on to college. We encourage you to go into technical careers. That requires education beyond high school. As a digital portfolio, you can say, look, I was in the seventh grade. I was in the eighth grade. I was doing these things. Um, we will have labs. Like I say, Mr. Maurer will have labs every few weeks, two weeks. Here's some of the things we're going to do. Civil engineering bridges. Um, we're going to get some laser cutter, uh, create your own kind of cardboard trophy head kind of an idea. We'll design it, and we're going to try to make them here, and I'll mail them to you. Mr. Maurer does not have a laser cutter there yet. I hope to work with him. hope we can get him a laser cutter down the road. Um, we will be doing Raspberry Pi. It's a microcomputer. It is a uh, $39 computer that's now as fast as a pretty good tablet. So you really can make it your computer. You can use it all the time for surfing on the net uh, and for programming and doing math and some really neat things. Uh, we're going to do Minecraft programming in Python. So you'll learn how to program Python, but we'll use Minecraft Pi. We've got a music server. We're going to do a game arcade type with the Raspberry Pi, and you're going to hook the joystick up and actually wire it in there. And we'll be doing some things with flight. Some of the software that we'll be using um, that you'll get a chance to at least see. 123D Design. 123D circuits, make, 3D printing software, code combat is a really neat thing for using it. I've got two questions here. Let me go ahead and get those questions. What's Minecraft Pi? Is it Minecraft as in the gamer? Minecraft Pi? Absolutely. It's Minecraft for the Raspberry Pi. And yes, only we can hack into it. So uh, all you Minecraft fans will really enjoy it. All right, and for people that are even on Minecraft, you will like the programming side of it. Code Combat is how we're going to look at programming um, with Python. We're going to use Inkscape, another program that helps you draw things for vinyl cutters and laser cutters. And then we're going to tie 123D Make is a program that slices things with cardboard. And we'll, we'll get into it. Some of these things aren't going to make sense, but if you want to look them up later, you have them. We use that with something called Mesh Mixer. And like I said, we, uh, we'll figure out a way on the laser cutter, even if we send you some stuff that you design, and we're looking at a vinyl cutter as well. All right. Now, let's check off some things, just to make sure. For those people that got in here, can everybody raise their hand so we can see that everybody knows how to do this? Or write a question to me to say, no, I'm on an iPad, for example, and I can't raise my hand. So just leave your hand up there and raise it. So Jason, yeah, we need you to raise your hand. Um, it's great to see some of you folks back here. Jaden, we need to see that. All right. Okay, excellent. Everybody sees how to raise their hand. So first things first here. Nice. Have you registered for the webinars? Well, obviously you're here. We can pretty much assume you have. If someone has not, I've sent out another email to everybody that signed up for the class or missing one or two to sign up. Tell them in class tomorrow if you see them. Hey, uh, uh, we had webinars. Were you there last night? And we have John, Jason, Noah. I'm just doing first names here if you know them. Cooper, Ohm, Ken, Aiden. Mr. Maurer's even joining us right now, and Jaden is here. So if there's other people we know that are here, tell encourage them to come. Again, we can record the webinars, and we will put them up in, within two hours after this. As soon as I get done with this webinar, I'm literally setting it up so I can record it and get it set up. To It's being recorded, I should say. You should all be very aware that we record all the webinars. So uh, as we're doing this, um, I, will try and, I will avoid using your last names as much as possible. But we do record the webinars. We will try to put them up within two hours of this webinar. If it doesn't happen, it's because there's a technical problem. We'll work real hard to fix it. Have you registered on Edmoto? I have many of you have, many of you have not. Let me show you what Edmoto looks like. Here it is, Edmoto. Okay? Raise your hand if you're on Edmoto because 
We'll get that in there. I don't want to, now I'm looking at this, I'll have to blur out this slide here. I don't want people's full names necessarily going out here, but have you registered on Edmodo? I need you to do that now. We're going to actually take class time to get everybody on Edmodo because it's so important if we have to get a message out to you. All right. What is the Edmodo code? Great question. Here we're going to go right to that. The Edmodo code for Iowa is I5. I'm going to put it right over here for you all. Of course, my mouse is going to fight me the whole time. Control copy. Here we go. I'm going to send it to everybody. I want you to register now. Parents, if you're joining us tonight, which is great if you are, it's very family friendly. You don't have to worry. It's, it's aimed at schools. Think of it Facebook for schools. A way for me to get information to your children without me need, needing to know or using their personal email or for them using my email. So it's I5F927. Students, if you need to email me directly for some reason, that is fine, but always email me with your parents' email in it. All I ask is if you email me that your parents are included in the email so everybody can see that it included in the email. Okay? That way we, you know, we do that mainly just so your parents, your everybody's on the same page. So, John, please uh, register to eat on Edmodo. Jason and Noah, if you guys have registered, put your hand up. Um, put your hand up. If you've registered. If you've not, then don't. All right. Great. Because this is how we're going to, you know, communicate, set things up more. All right. Um, as far as two, by the way, We'll record the webinars. On webinars where there's a lot of information that you need to be typing as we're going along or you're learning to use some software, please feel uh, free. Um, I should say, please feel free. Please, you'll, be, you'll be pleased to know that we'll be sending PDFs before the class so you will have those to refer as you go through it. All right, now let's go back in here. All right, you're gonna need a Gmail account. You will need a Gmail account for our Google Sites. And um, if we need to, I think last year, and Mr. Maurer will know this and can refer, send me an email, a question here, or I can um, tell me Texas, but I believe you all have an email, a Gmail account at your schools. And if that's the case, let's use those. And then that way you can get this uh, included there. Uh, Mr. Maurer, I'm going to go ahead and speak to you. If this isn't a good time, just leave yourself muted. I'm going to unmute you if that's okay. Mr. Maurer? Yeah, how are we doing? Oh, we're doing great. Do you have school Gmail accounts? I do for um, Bentler students and PV students. I I have their parent emails if they want to send me their All right. email accounts. I can reach out to them too. But the Bentler kids, I have access to. Great. So then this then what we're trying to do here then is we can make these Google site. They can set up their Google sites there, and they'll be able to access them. Yes, yeah, so and Bentonville kids all have Google Sites already because we build our school portfolios through that. So they can add, uh, they should have access to a Young Engineers page. Nice. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, sir. I'm very excited. How did lab go last night? Uh, start lab on Tuesday next week. So Tuesday next week. Okay, I got, got you a week early. Sorry, guys. My bad. My, mis my misspeak. All right. Okay, well, let me go ahead then. I'll get back to this webinar. Okay. Sounds good. All right, excellent.
All right, so we get started next week in lab. Okay, excellent. All right. All right, next thing. Um, we're going to go to YouTube. We uh, will have our webinars, and they are end up being on YouTube. So the one thing that makes it a lot easier is if you go ahead and just subscribe, make sure you get your parents' permission on this. All right, so let me go back here. We went back one page too soon. We're going to go on Young Engineers to, uh, to our YouTube page, and I will get that for you right here. Uh, let me go up to, bear with me, folks. I just had that up there. Let's go up here. I'll show you what it looks like. This way you can see it. Uh, whoops, clicked on the wrong one, Creator Studio. You want the one that has the green Google head. All right. And we're small. This is our Google site is not meant to be huge for everybody. We I think we only have 5,000 views or something, about 136 subscribers. But you can see, we'll start putting up our different middle school and our different webinars there. So that's where you can be, you can go right to it. Look up Young Engineers of Today. I will list all ours as Iowa. So that way you've got it right then, okay? Because we're going to be off a little bit differently than the other classes. We're starting in Iowa a little bit later, okay? Any questions on that? There's view the channel. Let's see what that looks like this. All right. So this is what it will look like, okay? So if you can, talk to your parents and go ahead then subscribe. Subscribe to it. That way the videos, you know when they're posted, when they've been launched, and you'll and you'll be ready to go the minute it goes up. Okay. All right. Rose your hand if you've got you're set on your Google site. It sounds like everybody was automatically set on that. You've got your Edmodo code. And you saw the YouTube. Is everybody clear on that? If you are, raise your hand, please. John's asking, should I? Yes, yeah. Use my school. Use your school Gmail. All right, and that. All right, great. Any other questions before we go any farther? All right, no questions. Okay, I'm gonna put everybody's hands down, if you've got any. I'm putting everybody's hands down. If you have a question, raise your hand right now, and I'm also looking to see. All right, all right, Mr. Shakul. Yes, what's your question? Um, wait. Uh, can you can you repeat the thing about um, the Edmodo code? The Edmodo code? Yeah. Okay, I put the, if you look down under chat, I put it, the code there for you. Let me see if I can put it in mm -hmm. again. I'm sending it to you right now, to everybody. So look under chat, you should see the code right down there now. Yeah. All right, so go to Edmodo. Sign in as a student. You were probably on it from last year. And then use that code. And we'll wait for you before we go any further. Okay? Yeah. Actually, I already did the Edmodo code. All right. Okay, so you're all set then? Yeah. All right, great. Okay. Thank all right. you. Excellent. You're welcome. And again, I've seen a lot of familiar names and really very happy you're all back. Very excited about this. All right, so let's go through this now. All right, so what's exactly is an engineer? And for some, you know, again, we talked a little about this last year, but let's talk about it. It's, according to Webster, hey, it's a practical application of science and math. Making machines, vehicles, structures, roads, and systems. But I would tell you, 
as would Mr. Maurer, I think that we, an engineer is a way of thinking. It's a, um, it's how we approach problem solving. And it's really an opportunity to be very creative. We use math and science to improve the world. All right. Uh, a perfect is <laughs> I didn't choose engineering life. The engineering life chose me. And we're going to get into what makes a good engineer. But I just, what I want you to understand with engineering is it's taking what you've learned in that math and science and apply it. And we'll get in a minute here about the scientific method and engineering method. And then we'll, I just want you to think about lasers as we do that. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Think of the guy here with the straw around his eyes. I love that straw. All right. Engineers need to be strong in math and science. Notice we said strong. You don't have to be a super genius in math and science. They need to be problem solvers who show perseverance. So even if you go into the engineering field, but you end up going into business, you run a farm or you run your, um, I don't know how many farmers you really have at your school. Uh, I grew up in Midwest Ohio. I was on a farm. But even in town, you're in town and you're growing and um whatever you do, be it business, be it art, be it theater, this teaches you how to problem solve. You'll find a lot of use for that. And the perseverance, I think, we can use in all of our lives. You'll also need to be able to work as a team and to communicate effectively. When you're in lab, working with people, learning how to say that, I used to poop all that, to be honest. I used to think, well, was it really teamwork? And business is... I spend a fair amount of time listening to business leaders and what they're looking for. Um, I'm on an advisory, college advisory group. And so I see what other engineering schools are doing. This is really important that you can communicate. My students right now, I have seniors putting together a uh, shop bot. It's about a $25,000 CNC machine. That's a lot of money for our school, for my school. And... You know, I'm putting some faith into them that they can put this together because the easy thing would have been to, to do is pay somebody to come in and put it together in a day or two days. Our seniors are putting it together. They have to be able to work as a team. They have to be able to communicate effectively. And what you, we see when the kids are doing that and what these leaders are telling us, and it's so important, is because no one has ever invented anything by themselves. Let me say that again. No engineers invent anything by themselves in a garage completely by themselves. And then and then be able to successfully commercialize it. They might, one person, you might say, well, they had most of the ideas, but they're going to be working with other people. And there's a very good chance that if you go into these fields, you go into programming, you go into engineering, you're going to be working with other people. All right. I do like engineers need to be strong in math and science. Look at the woman there studying. What my family thinks I do. What my friends think I do. What society thinks I do. What social science majors think I do. What I think I do. What I actually do. And they're having a little bit of fun that you're going to have to study a lot when you hit college with this. And you're going to have to study hard in high school. And the fact of the matter is you are. But you get to do amazing things. And I think if you're now old enough that you're starting to get into sports, you start to realize you got to run the gassers before you can play basketball. You know, it's whatever sport you're in, you got to work. If you're on the cross country team, you're running, 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 so you can race effectively. In engineering and programming, and when I say engineering, I'm talking programming, applied sciences, math, any of those fields. That requires that you work really hard. You know, that requires that you're willing to put the time in to do it. This class, we aren't going to be going crazy doing a bunch. You're not going to get a lot of homework. This is enrichment. This is outside your class day. So don't worry about this class, us doing this. But I, what I do want you to realize that you go into high school, you're going to take, you're going to need to take the math classes and the science classes. And when you go to college, you're not going out on a Thursday night. You're going to a lab. And you need to know that now, So, um, which is a good thing. You have plenty of time to prepare. Hopefully you enjoy some of the stuff anyway, so that's pretty good. 
But like with any field, any job, there's always parts that you might like less. Maybe you love math. Maybe you're a little bit, I'm not crazy about math. Well, you still got to get through it. Because of this, engineering is the application of math and science. Because of this, it's essential that you have a, a strong foundation in those things. Again, don't have to be a math genius. Yeah, they all need to study hard in math or science, whatever engineering you are, be a bridge builder or chemical manufacturer, chemi. And as I said before, you don't have to be a math superstar. I think a math is one of the few things you get better and better the older you get. Right now in your life at your age, everything's getting better as you're getting older as far as your abilities. But there comes a time, and it'll come quickly, where you start to peak in your 20s and sports and things. Math, you actually can keep getting better. I'm a much better programmer as I got older than when I was a first programmer. Okay? All right. Now, to be an engineer, they need to be able to work as a team and communicate effectively. Love is in the air. False. False. Nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and carbon dioxide are in the air. All right. That's from the office. I don't even know if any of you are watch that, ever watched it. All right. Any questions so far? To, to solve great problems, engineers of different backgrounds must come together to combine their expertise. So, you know, again, we're going to have engineers all working together. In order for them to be a team to be successful, you need to be able to know just not the answer, but share it in a clearer way others will be able to understand. And you also got to be able to listen. I can't stress that one enough. You need to be able to listen. So here is, look up at the top left-hand corner, folks. What the user, what the user asked for? Is right up here. How the analyst saw it. How the system was designed. As the programmer wrote it. What the user really wanted. So sometimes this is what the user said he wanted, asked for. But this is really what he wanted. And how it actually worked. You know, they cut down the tree and they put it next to it. That's how it feels like. So this ability to communicate is really essential especially on complicated projects. You need to be a problem solver and show perseverance. Half credit? If you build a bridge and it collapsed and killed everyone, do you get half credit? Because you built the bridge. Well, of course not. So, you don't... As you go through things, again, in this class, we're in grading your testing you, but this is your future classes. Strive to keep working at it. Strive that you do it well. We're, you're going to hear me say a lot. Um, you're going to hear me say a lot about little failures to lead to big successes. It's okay as you're working on something, you fail a little bit as long as you keep working at it. So this year, when you're soldering Mr. Maurer's class, have the perseverance to go with it. If it doesn't go together right off the bat, that's not the end of the world. All right? But you've got to stay at it, and you need to finish it up. Engineers are presented with huge problems that they need to break down to manageable tasks. They are technical problem solvers. And the best feeling is when there's a technical problem, you figure it out and you solve it. And it's really cool when you solve problems other people haven't solved yet. It's a blast. I've had the good fortune of doing a pure science research and answering a question nobody had asked. It was a big problem. It was a little bit of trivia in terms of uh, the Christmas bird surveys and whether it's better to have one person or many people doing their survey together. I did a statistical analysis to answer that question. And then I've designed and worked on projects uh, with engineering and chemists. And it's great when you solve a problem and you think of for a minute and you go, I don't think anybody else has solved this problem. It's a really great, great feeling. All right. What kind of jobs are there for engineers? Another one. Don't mess with an electrical engineer. It megahertz. Yeah, that's pretty lame, but I still like it. All right. There are many fields of engineering. 
including civical, civical, listen to that, civil, mechanical, electrical, chemical, aerospace, structural, genetic, biomedical, computer, software, military, nuclear, forensics. You can imagine forensics. You, dis, you can be a forensic civil engineer, for example, figure out why a bridge failed. Reverse engineering, uh, you take something else apart and figure out how somebody else did it. Environmental, solving real world problems, folks. Don't go, think of engineering just as a guy in a hard hat. You should also think of it as a gal in a hard hat. There are many different kinds of jobs from hands-on to research to leading a team. Perks of the job. Well, you do make a good living doing this. That's what I want you to know. So in engineering, look at compared to almost all the other sal salaries out there. It's seventy-five to 99000 And, you know, you look at some of these other fields, they, they drop off dramatically. Computer mathematics, uh, business, significantly less, health, physical science, social science, agricultural, natural resources. But I also think, and here's the top salaries, petroleum, could, though petroleum's probably off right now. Petroleum was way up with gas fracking. I suspect that's down right now. Still have chemical engineering, always does well. Electrical, materials, aerospace, pays well. Um, computers, but even in the engineering world, let me tell you something. As you think about being an engineer, do the broad categories. Do either mechanical, electrical, um, chemical, computer science, probably good. Those are all very employable. If you're going to do bioengineering or aerospace engineering, you need to be very good in your class because those jobs are much harder. You need to get internships and you really need to be doing just about better than anybody else in your class to get those jobs in those fields those have always been harder jobs to get if you get the job it pays real well all right just because though you make a lot of money you may or may not be satisfied and so here is our side with your current career path notice chemical engineering are very excited Man management information services, they're super excited. But so these other people are pretty happy with where they are. Notice the environmental engineering was a bit frustrating, and I'm kind of curious why. My guess is they, they know the right thing to do. They may not just be uh, compensated or can get everybody to go along. I imagine environmental engineers spend a lot of their time... Um, some environmental engineers, I should say, spend a lot of their time going to people saying, you need to do this, to, for example, to prevent, protect the levees in, uh, say, down in New Orleans, and when they knew they weren't protected. So, you no know, psych was 26%. I think probably the frustration for psych is you need to get, you need to be an advanced degree and you need to be very, very good to get work in psych. And, and social work just unfortunately doesn't pay well. We don't value it as much as we should. Um, half the jobs today are created as a result of technology. Not really crazy, like social media, search engine optimization, content, those kinds of things. However, the downside on this, and we talked a little bit about this last year, is many jobs are being lost to it. Here's low skill. Now, those jobs have gone up a little bit. High skill, gone way up. Medium skilled jobs are just getting hammered. So the technical occupations, they're doing really well. Production op op options, production skills, they're just getting hammered. So say, for example, manufacturing is coming back to the United States. The problem is a factory that might have used 30 people that we could train many of the people right out of high school to do that's disappeared. It's replaced by just a few people, highly trained, so either a two-year degree or four-year degree. And by the way, there's a lot of very good paying jobs in, say, mechatronics, It's more, which can be a two-year degree at a local community college that pays very well and very comparable to four-year salaries. All right. Can you tell me why low skill might not have been replaced? You can see high skill has not been replaced, but medium skill has been replaced by computers, by robotics. 
Why would you not? Would anybody have an idea why they wouldn't replace the low-skilled folks? But mind you, even in China, they were replacing folks. China, where they make the iPhone, they're going to spend $3 billion on automation. All right. Does anybody have a, an explanation? Folks, it goes much better if you throw a question. Raise your hand if you think you know. Oh, who's going to be my student that steps out there? Good job, Caden. What do you think is causing it, buddy? Um, it's it's more expensive to do automation than it is. It's cheaper just to pay the people to do it themselves. Well done. That's exactly right. All right. Yes, that's exactly right. We just haven't done it because it's not. It doesn't make sense to do it with uh, low low skills. Though over time, even those jobs are going to get hammered, um, and you're going to see it. So it's important in that technical schools for you folks to go into these fields. We need it. We need to be more efficient. And what's great is if we, um, on the automation side, in some ways it helps America compete because the labor, that delta, there's a difference between what we pay labor costs here, people do work here, than say um, in Asia. Well, if all the work's being done by machines, there really isn't a cost there. All right. So, do you see what's going on in here? These machines were doing something 15 years ago you could not, they said they couldn't do. That is, they build electric shavers. Look how many people are in this spot. I'll tell you right now. One, two, three people three folks that used to be a line of 30 40 people it may not be what we want i'm worried about people that have lost their jobs and some people it's going to be very difficult to get back in this economy but this is certainly contributing to it so what your parents want for you and what i want for you your teachers want for you is that if you have this these skill sets, we want you to pursue them. Understand, too, not everybody should be an engineer and programmer. And I don't think any of us as teachers of this would tell you that. We just want the kids that, that would like to invent, that think they would like to do it. We want you to be exposed so you'll want to do it. So engineering versus the scientific method. Let's talk a little bit about that. All right. So let's talk a little bit. Well, wait a minute. Before we go on... Um, any questions about that? I think, Caden, do you have another question? Do you have another question, Caden? Uh, no. Okay, no worries. No, just... Put your hand up. Yeah, that's no worries. Raise your hand if you think you want to be a game programmer. I just, I'm going to just survey you all. Just And you can raise it more than once if you think. See, now game programming, just to let you know, that's a tough one to get a job in. So just give you an idea. So what that means is don't doesn't mean you don't do it. It means you need, when you're taking programming class, you need to be the best one in the class. You need to get internships, get jobs, start making your own games in your high school. So you've got to do a lot of things to get into that field, cracking it open. Let me put your hands on. How many of you think you'd be interested in what's called network security, where you do what, what's called white hat hacking? The bad guys do black hat hacking. They break into computer systems. You prevent that people from going into the computer systems. Well, folks, for those who've raised their hand for that, and I think it's just Ty right here, those jobs are wide open. Anytime Target or Sears or the government gets hacked, a bunch of people and a bunch of companies worry, are they going to be attacked? And um, the Air Force is always looking for officers to do it. And if you have a security clearance background, wide open. Um, how many of you think you would like to be like chemistry? Anybody here think they'd like to be a chemical engineer? Well, if you get into chemistry and you think you like it, that field always pays real well. 
How many people think they would like to do computer engineering? You work on the computers, it's software, it's computers. Great field there. Always hiring, always staying very strong. Okay. And then how many, did we have anybody in here? Quite not driving yet, so you may not be interested. Anybody here like working on cars or like cars? All right. Is anybody here like the environment or is interested in helping the environment? If you are, environmental engineering is a great field to make changes to help the environment. If you want to help people, think about bioengineering. Again, bioengineering like envir uh, bioengineering like aerospace, a little tough to get in, but uh, if you do a good job, you can get a job there. If you do a good job in college, you can get in to open the door. All right, let's go on to engineering versus the scientific method. Now, this is the scientific method. Observation, I notice something. I come up with a hypothesis, to, and then I do an experiment that tries to disprove my hypothesis, by the way. We analyze the data, we do a conclusion, and then our peers repeat it. All right. What about planes? Holographic engineer. I'm jumping back over here. I didn't see this. I want to get caught up. Yes, the holographics. You've seen the new Microsoft product that's supposed to do very holographic. It's amazing. Jason, you want to do planes? That's aerospace and flight. And being in Iowa, you're closer. Than, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. You're in Iowa. You're closer to the Dakotas. And that's where a lot of that's designed, and in Kansas. Okay? So, yes, that would be aerospace. All right. In terms of the scientific method, you have an observation, you have a hypothesis, an experiment, analyze data, conclusion, peer review. All right. Let me give you a, an example of this. We started looking at the night skies. We've done it since there have been human beings. We look up. We tell stories about it. We see the same patterns every night. There's something reassuring to me when I go out and I winter's coming now, so I'll see the winter constellations. And as the winter goes on, I can tell what time it is by which where the constellation is in the night sky. In, in some ways, it's extremely comforting. Like, oh, wow, here it is again, old friend, you're back. And I know it's been this way for thousands of years. It'll be thousand years after I'm gone. Um, so scientists start thinking about saying, you know, we've studied energy and we realize what I'm seeing with my eyes is visible light. And that's just a very small in the en en uh, energy spectrum, infrared, UV, ultraviolet, x-rays, they're all in the spectrum. Our eyes don't see them. Our eyes really don't see infrared, don't see ultraviolet, don't see x-rays. So they said, well, let's start building machines that will allow us to detect that. And in that process, we learned a lot more about our universe. That's full of lots of other energies we can't see with our eyes. If you look at these other scopes, you'll look out at the night sky and you'll see it's exploded with all kinds of energies. Well, in the process of doing that, we invented lasers as we learned about science and about astronomy. The astronomy, do we need it from a practical perspective? And the answer, the answer to that is, no, it's not practical. You can live your whole life without ever looking at the night sky. I think you're missing out, but you don't have to. There are plenty of people who don't. So we're, when we study astronomy, we're studying for knowledge's sake. We're trying to better describe reality. That's what science is all about. If you study lions or dolphins or volcanoes or extinct dinosaurs, you don't need to know any of those things for most every, most 99% of us would never need to see a volcano or know about extinct dinosaurs or go see a dolphin. But I would argue it makes you an interesting person. It opens up our minds to things. Okay, and that's one thing that science is. Science is very interested 
and describing that reality, we the rules, the scientific method, what we believe in isn't the facts that I, as a science teacher, are telling you. What you should believe in is our method works. So what that method is, is we come up with a hypothesis describing something, then we test that hypothesis in such a way we try to prove our hypothesis wrong, try to prove it's false. If we prove it is false, then we get rid of our hypothesis. Then if enough people keep testing a, an hypothesis with all kinds of different experiments, and after time, nobody's proved it false, it starts to become accepted. And that becomes a theory. And then over many more years of doing that, it becomes a law generally. Because the consensus is, we've all done this experiment, we've all tested this hypothesis in many, many different ways. We've predicted, we predicted ideas based on this hypothesis that when they, in the future, when data came in, it ended up being true, all right? I can tell you, and it was found, that, for example, with HIV, that there would be a group of people that would be less likely to get it because of a variety of human beings. If, our, if we're saying, hey, it's a, what's caused the it was a virus and we have different immune responses. Um, I'm trying to think of some, some more examples of that, but we test hypotheses. Uh, for example, it was determined that satellites, there would be a little bit of a very, and this would be tiny, time dilation with satellites because of where they are away from the Earth and gravity. And when we did the measurements, and this was according to Einstein's theories of, you know, almost 100 years ago, um, or over 100 years ago, um, we actually in the 60s found the dilations as he would have predicted it. So that helps to support a hypothesis that seems pretty good. One thing I do want to point out that makes science really incredible is you don't have to take my word for it. It's very important in science that other people can repeat the experiment. Let me say that again. It's very important that others can repeat your experiment. If they can't, if we don't do a peer review, we don't call it good science. Others have to be able to do it. Now, so if I tell you I can grow hair on an orange with using uh, ketchup, you don't have to accept that. You, if you're going to accept that, you should be able to go get an orange, put ketchup on the or, uh, orange, and grow hair on it. Then you'll like, support my hypothesis. And if you can't repeat it, then you'll reject my hypothesis. And you'll wonder what I was really doing. Engineering method takes what we learn in math and science, so that's part of our research phase and planning phase, and then we prototype it and we iterate. We Prototyping includes iterations. We repeat, we do it, we repeat, and we commercialize. Notice there's no peer review here. And what you're doing is you're letting the marketplace many times tell you if it's a good idea or not. So engineering takes that math and science that we learned and allows us to prototype, which includes the idea of iterate, try it, improve it, try it, improve it, try and improve it, try and improve it, try and improve it. And then you commercialize it. Science, a little bit less concerned about commercialization because you're seeking just pure knowledge. And that's surprisingly, engineers, this is one of the reasons, um, great, um, I'm glad to see you want to be an aerospace engineer, awesome. Um, this is one of the reasons why probably engineers make more money than regular pure science because there's usually a commercial enterprise somehow associated with them. And they're certainly not all engineers. There might be engineers that work for, not, uh, for a greater good. Um, there could be engineers that um, are doing, they're an engineer, but they're really doing science. So, okay. Any questions about that? And I got, obviously, I've got some flight folks that are interested as well. All right. All right, so here's, here's, all right. And so here's the diff difference methods between the scientific method 
and the engineering design process. Scientific math challenge. How can we prove that the theory is right or wrong? We do background and research, which you're all going to do, usually, do a hypothesis, which is nothing more than an educated guess. And here's the difference between an educated guess and a guess. If I said to you, um, let's use uh, Iowa Hawkeyes, uh, your college football team, was going to play the Bettendorf Middle School, and it's a soccer team. It's Iowa Hawkeye soccer team is going to play the Bettendorf Elementary soccer team. We can make an educated guess that the college kids are going to be the elementary kids. The college kids are a lot bigger, a lot faster, done a lot more practice. That's an educated guess. But if I said to you, um, two high school teams, the Alabama Cardinals versus the North Carolina Lumberjacks, who's going to win in lacrosse? If you have no idea who those teams are, what the ages they are, then you are just guessing. Where in the first case, it's an educated guess. You can go, well, kids are older, they're bigger, they're faster, they're probably going to do better. You see, the, you see that on a hypothesis? So that's what we're trying to do here. Now, background and research. So you get that hypothesis, you describe a test that tests the hypothesis, you observe the results, you get a conclusion, and then you do that peer review. We don't have a list there, but that's an important part of this. Engineering design process, what can we create to solve this? Brainstorm a bunch of different ideas. You select an idea, you analyze and explain your ideas. That's where you use math. We just don't throw out ideas all the time, and we don't check to see if they follow the rules of science and math. Yeah, what I mean is you can't say, well, we have an energy problem. Okay, we'll build a perpetual motion machine. Through some very specific laws of physics, perpetual motion machines will not work. All right? So you need to understand science. You're out there trying to make a machine that just can't work in the universe you live in. All right? You build and test your design. You design your design, figure out which is the best one, and you'll redesign You'll iterate based on what you've learned and you'll commercialize. That reiteration is really important to engineering. You're a lot, again, a lot of small failures on a way to a big success. All right. Engineering statistics. Um, these are the things employ they're looking for to work. Communication skills. Teamwork skills, interpersonal skills, strong work ethic. Notice GPA is lowest, uh, lower on that. All right. Notice relevant work experience is important. Internship experience, any work experience, co-op experience. So this is from a, from a while back, but it's still very attributed today. You graduate from engineering college, they know you're smart enough. So now they want to see is how well do you work with other people? Because they want to get you working and contributing to the business as fast as they can. All right? This is why, as you're going through this, another thing I really suggest when you're in college, join a club, get in a competition, do, you know, I know you have a strong first Lego League team. We do. We used to do first Lego League. We've moved to Sumo, sumo Bots. We've done... Um, Sea perch, underwater robots. We do a lot of things like that. I think it's really good for you to do. It gets you work in a team. You do first Lego League, great. Keep doing it. Join different teams and competitions. All right. Now, really, and that was the gold Rubberg machine, but it's about that time anyway. So we're going to call it a stop at this point. All right. Are there any questions for tonight? Has, and we had one or two people that might have joined us here. I saw some come and go off the set. Does anybody not on Edmodo that needs help? Does anybody have a question? I guess you have your first lab next week. I had it on my calendar. I'm sorry. I had it this week. My bad. Um, does anybody have any questions, concerns, any questions about the class? All right, then. Let's look forward to next week. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put this. Uh, I'm gonna put this webinar up on YouTube tonight, and I wish you all a uh, a great Wednesday night. What's left of it, and look forward to talking to you next Monday. Remember, we'll be meeting Monday and Wednesday of next week. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Let me ask you a couple. Oh, before you hang up, hold on, hold on. Before you hang up, let me select the poll here. Um, how'd you enjoy the webinar for this one? If you would, just answer that before you head out, and then we can call it. I always like getting it. We're at 100%. I always get that one person that gives me fair. I got to figure out what I need to do to make them better for that person. Um, and if you got my suggestions, please show me. Let me close the poll. I'll share the results. 50% uh, liked it. 30% thought it was good. And 13% with the number of people here, it's one person said it was fair. So whatever. I'll work harder and try to make it so we can get it better all the way around. But look forward to it. It was a lot of talking. In the future, the webinars are not going to be like this. You're going to be doing while I'm talking. We're going to work together on stuff. So don't worry. It will not be death by PowerPoint. Okay? All right. Everybody take care. Good night now. You can sign out now. Good night, everybody.